Today we're going to discuss the fifth house in the New Moon Moonology book. So this is video number five in a series of 12, and we're going to talk all about it in a minute. Hey guys, I'm Mel from Mel's Divination. I'm the owner, the operator, and the creator here. And we do all kinds of fun things here. We do Witchy Wednesdays. We do Flip Through Fridays. We do astrology on the weekends or when there's major changes. We also talk about new moon and full moon. And I share all kinds of materials and resources and information. And if you're watching this, you are either looking for information on the new moon or maybe you're new and welcome. You can find me at melsdivination.com and also the first link, the first tap link, it's a tap link in the description box below is a link that can take you to all the different things that have to do with me, with the business and with this channel. If you are unfamiliar with this, I do recommend you go back and watch some of the other videos because this is one, this is number five in a series and I'm not going to get too detailed in like reintroducing stuff, all right? This video is about the fifth house, the new moon in the fifth house and what kind of energy that is and how to work with it. Now, I do just need to say that this is not my information. I am sharing from Yasmin Boland's Moonology book, and I am putting it into more of a digestible approach. So when it, this is in your fifth house, when the new moon is in your fifth house, you can just hop here, watch the video, and know how to work with the energy if that's what you want to do. We're gonna get right into this. So the fifth house is known as your fun zone. This is all about creativity, kids, and romance, and maybe one or maybe all three of those things. To expect fun and laughter, time with kids, and creative surges. Wish for a reminder and a memory that life is a game. Visualize having a good time with people that you love. And keep in mind, life is as fun as we make it. It is what we choose to focus on. Messages for this moon. The part of your chart being triggered relates to three main areas, creativity, children, and sexy romance, as opposed to the serious stuff. Where creativity is concerned, if you're a bit of a closet artist, the next four weeks will give you an excellent chance to work on your skills. Where sexy romance is concerned, budding new romances are possible now, and old romances could feel brand new if you make the most out of this month's energy, and look for ways to inject more erotic fun. And kids, whether they are your own or somebody else's, kids are usually a big issue when the moon's new in the fifth house. The meditation at this time is my inner child will have a ball this month. Ritual, laugh out loud for a good minute or two. Don't worry about feeling silly, just do it. Things to do, take up belly dancing. It's erotic and physical. Make a toy for a child, your own or somebody else's. Take a lover, take your lover on an adventure, write a short story, paint a picture, anything that feels creative. Do something that is your idea of fun, throw a party. Three affirmations, repeat one or all three daily during this new moon and in the next coming four weeks. Life is sweet, I now release my inner child for some fun. I am a creative being and my juices are flowing. Essential oil for this month is cinnamon. It's a lesser known oil that's really useful for fifth house matters. For one thing, it's an aphrodisiac and this part of the chart has a very flirty, fun feel to it. It controls blood sugars. In other words, if you've been going wild with your fifth house and having too much fun, it can regulate things for you. And it's also known as one of the happy making essential oils. And that is part of your chart that this is all about having fun. I do want to say be wise. I didn't say that at the beginning. Use common sense when using things like essential oils. Please do your research. Do carrier oils, things of that nature. 
the numerological energy, tongue twister, is the number five. It's all about being independent. It's always in motion and in need of change, much like a child. And of course, kids come under the fifth house. So embrace your kids or embrace your inner child this month. The mantra to use this month is VAM, I think is how it's said. If not, please comment in the comments below because I am not perfect and some of this information is unfamiliar to me. So chant it out loud. VAM is V-A-M. Chant it out loud or silently every day while you're in the shower before or after meditating or at any other time that feels right to you. It works to boost the chakras of the month. The 3D chakra is the sacral chakra. The 3D chakra this month is the sacral chakra, a.k.a. Svadhisthana. I will write it down because I'm sure I did not say that right. This is the chakra associated with food and sex. How apt for the part of your chart that's all about having fun. It's all about your ability to know what you want, what will help you enjoy life, what will feel good. It's about your willingness to feel your emotions and allow yourself to have a good time. And the color is orange. So this is the second chakra if you start from the bottom up. The 5D chakra is the most wonderful thing about the solar plexus. So sacral is 3D, 5D is solar plexus, which is gold and with rainbow lights is that it can absorb any negative energy around you and transmute it. This strengthens your confidence in yourself and allows you to live out your potential. When you believe in yourself, you're more able to become wise. In this series, I've been sharing, like the chakra card, also cards from the decks that I have that cover the archangels and the guiding goddess. This guiding archangel is Raziel. He has two Endorian Virtues deck. We have the Magician and then we, I know you can't read it, but because it's backwards. And then we have the Hermit. Okay, so let's talk about this. Archangel Raziel teaches people about esoteric information. Makes sense why he would be the magician. He's the archangel who can help us to understand deep spiritual symbolism, past lives, dream interpretation, sacred geometry, and so on. This is where it gets interesting. She says, remember, this is from Doreen Virtue. The cards are from Doreen Virtue. And this author who wrote Moonology, her name is Yasmin Bolin. Two different people. Okay. So Yasmin says... Think of the car, tarot card, the sun. That's not what I have here. And you'll get a sense of how Archangel Raziel and the fifth house work together, bringing light and understanding where there has been confusion or misunderstanding. To connect with Archangel Raziel, simply light a candle, say his name, and ask for help. Dearest Archangel Raziel, please be with me this month as I work on letting my light shine. With your help and guidance, I can reach my full potential. Thank you. You can also ask Raziel for help if you need it regarding your actual home. So these two cards, this one's the Magician, right? The Magician is Major Arcana 1, and it says you are ready, you have the resources or the ability to manifest them, life is magical. So it does make sense about the energy around that, esoteric, right? And then the Hermit, it's number 9, and this one says spend time in quiet meditation, spiritual teaching, self-discovery. That also makes sense. One thing that bugs me about this deck, I don't use it. I'm using it as visuals for you guys at this point because I don't really work with it at this point anymore. But she, there's so many archangels and she repeats them in a lot. And then there's some that she didn't even cover. Dor she meaning Doreen Virtue. So that does kind of annoy me. Hold on, Mom. Now, fix it. Pick up. I do not have a card for this current guiding goddess. I definitely I checked two decks. I checked my Dorian Virtue Goddess deck, and I even checked the Divine Feminine deck, and it's not in either of them. So 
let's just talk about what Yasmin has here. Guiding goddess, talk to Medusa, the sun goddess. If you're willing to see life as it really is, to be bold and to chase your dreams without worrying about who may or may not approve. Talk to Medusa if you're willing to shine your light out into the world without fear of treating, treading on someone's toes. To connect with Medusa, simply say her name and ask for her help. Universal law. This month's law is the law of cause and effect. Accept that everything happens for a reason. There's a cause and an effect. To put it another way, nothing happens by chance. For every action, including our thoughts, there's a reaction or consequence. We reap what we sow. What does this mean to you? Notice what happens this month and ask yourself, why? And I actually have in my notes that I wanted to make a mel note about that. So mel note is this concept can be very toxic. So don't overdo it. <laughs> there are some situations that we're just born into or that are out of our control that do happen so within reason all right don't don't go to the to the extreme where you're taking on that every single bad thing that has ever happened to you is something that you did or thought or brought to yourself because no <laughs> just no that's very unhealthy thinking okay heavenly ray the orange fifth ray is governed by Master Hilarion and overseen by the Maha Koken Saint Germain. This ray is connected with ascension in the spiritual growth process, but it's also about the activation and evolution of the soul. It assists science, but at a higher level, it also boosts the ability of the soul to integrate with what is in our lives here in the third dimension. That is everything on the fifth house for the new moon that is in the new moon section of the Moonology book by Yasmin Bolin. My notes here for you are, and this is going to sound probably familiar if you've been watching the series, you do not have to do everything. You can just do one thing that resonates with you. I don't really do anything from numerology on. I don't do mantras. 3D chakras, 5D chakras, guiding archangel, universal law, or heavenly ray. I don't do any of those. If you've noticed, you may not have, this talks about working with three separate colors. Every new moon she does this. Heavenly ray, orange. 5D chakra, rainbow and gold. And 3D chakra, actually, which is also orange. This is the first time that they've aligned like that. So that's a lot of colors. It's usually three separate ones. So use it or don't, whatever you're most comfortable with, right? And what I do sometimes when I have a goddess card that matches, I will put that goddess on my altar for the month, but I don't really do much else besides that. So take what resonates, leave the rest. Don't get like fixated on you have to do this or it has to be that way. Make it your own. Use common sense, be safe, be smart. And that's it. I'd also love for you to share with me in the community whenever the new moon hits your fifth house. So let's say your fifth house is Taurus. When the new moon is in Taurus, share with us that it, this is when it's your fifth house, when you're watching it. Put it in the comments so I can see who's doing it, who's not, who's interested. And maybe you may actually meet somebody where your moon lines up with each other. I hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned for the next video. It will be number six, and I'll see you soon.